beautiful windows you have behind you. <laughs> Very nice. Hey, thanks. Yeah, we're in our uh, Chicago office, so it's actually uh, kind of hard to see. But yeah, they just put this new building up next to us, so then you can see kind of the skyline there. I have to get up like really close to it. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for a peek at Chicago. Got a, little, got a little tour. You got apartments next to us. So that's always fun people watching. Did you admit that? Uh, the staff told me. The staff told me. I'm, I'm almost never here. I'm all, always on the road with folks like you digging into the, the kickoffs of the studies. So I'm excited that I actually be in the office a little bit today. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time today. I'll, I'll mute so our chairman can take over. Yes, I'd like to welcome everybody today to the tourism meeting and uh, I'll call it to order. We do have a quorum. Uh, first item of business, approve the minutes of the September 21st meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion by Supervisor Wow, second by Supervisor Merlino. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I'm gonna turn the uh, meeting over to Joanne Conley, our tourism director. So Joanne, please have at it. Thank you, good morning. Um, welcome to the tourism committee meeting this morning. We do have two presenters with us today that have answered our RFP for competitor market data for Warren County. We will begin uh, with Dave Bratton of Destination Analysts. Dave is the founder and managing director of that organization. And he will be followed by uh, Rob Hunden who is the president and CEO of Hunden Strategic Partners. So we will allow each of you to make a presentation and share your screen if you have a PowerPoint to share with us. Um, and the committee has taken time to review your proposals ahead of time. There may be some question and answer. Um, Dave and Rob, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So may I proceed? You want me to go ahead with this? You are cleared to move ahead. Thank cleared you. To launch. All right. Well, thank you all very much for having me here today. I'm thrilled to uh, have a chance to present our ideas on how to uh, solve your problems. We, uh, when we got your request for proposals, it's one of the more interesting ones that we, we get a lot of them. And this one was fascinating. And I think that our uh, approach will solve all your problems and uh, could be a really uh, ideal way to move forward. So let me just talk about it now. What I'm going to do is talk about my company a little bit. I'll tell you who we are and uh, why we'd be a good partner for you. Then I'll present our proposed approach, which I think is fairly straightforward and simple and uh, happy to take any questions you have after that. So my company, Destination Analysts, was founded in 2003 by myself and our CEO and president, Aaron Francis Cummings. We both, just as a little background on us, we both had worked at the San Francisco Convention and Visitors Bureau for a long time. I was the research uh, director and we also ran their website and email promotions. So Aaron was brought in to manage our, our, a lot of our marketing uh, programs like uh, the Dine About Town and a bunch of the foodie stuff that we were doing back in the day. So we had a good chance to work together and kind of had this idea that a lot of what we'd learned and developed to measure the effectiveness of our uh, programs and make them better, we could take out and sell to the, you know, DMO community because there weren't a lot of companies out there doing that. So that's what we've done. And our goal is always to provide a deep look into the questions at hand. We really want to dig deeper and from the perspective of people that actually know a lot about destination marketing because we've been in the trenches ourselves and uh, to provide our clients with actionable, actionable defensible uh, and timely results. Um, we've had over 200 clients who are travel and tourism related, uh, everything from national tourism offices to regional city um, DMOs to attractions. You can see some of the logos of our clients behind, uh, behind here now. We do a lot of uh, syndicated work for the industry to help our customers and our, you know, everyone in the industry to understand what's going on in the issues of the day. We, you can see a few of them here. One on the upper right is the CVB in the future, the meetings industry. 
This is a study we do of meeting planners and their feelings about DMOs basically every year with Destinations International. The State of the International Traveler down below that is a study we do every year of 14 of the major feeder markets to America, studying how they feel about international travel and specifically America and its destinations brands. The State of the American Traveler on the lower left is a quarterly study we've been doing since 2003 with our friends at Miles Partnership. It's a tracking study of how uh, American travelers are feeling. And then most recently, the Coronavirus Travel Sentiment Index report. Some of you may have been, uh, you know, at some of our webinars, which we've been doing every week throughout this pandemic, measuring and reporting in very short amount of time after our survey, the uh, feelings of Americans about uh, travel during this uh, terrible pandemic we've gone through. So we also do a lot of work with US travel just to uh, help them. Um, example, there's the American Vacation Usage Study we did recently. Um, we're quoted a lot in the national press. You can see some examples here. Recently, we were featured on CBS this morning with Gail King and uh, meet, uh, meet the Press, actually. So a lot of TV and uh, print coverage of our work. Um, and we believe strongly, I believe very strongly that the best research comes out of a diverse perspective. We are a fully woman run company. Um, I've moved to other, other roles in the company away from uh, running the place. Aaron, our CEO and Kim, our vice president do the majority, the vast majority of day-to-day uh, -day operations. Um, and you see pictures here of our team that will be working with you if you choose us for this project. Um, all great people and very excited to help you out. Another of our core values is public speaking. We work very hard to train our staff to be able to go out and present our clients' results. So if you have uh, a need to have us present any, anyone in your community or your stakeholders, I think you can be confident that we'll do a really good job for you to try and entertain your crowd and make sure they understand exactly uh, what the findings are and how to use them. Uh, some of our strengths, and I think our biggest strength really is our tourism industry specialization. Uh, our team came out of the DMO world. Uh, we've, like I say, been in the trenches doing that work. And uh, we, we speak your language. We've had a number of clients tell us that that's the thing they love most about us is that they speak the language, we speak the language that, uh, the peculiar language of the DMO. Also at the bottom here, I wanted to call out that we're open and nimble and flexible. One of the things you'll find if you work with us is that we are not bureaucratic in any way at all. If whatever you need to be happy with this project, I promise you that we'll do it. We're fully dedicated to the success of our clients and uh, you'll never get any, any flack from us at all for extra money or anything like that. It's just not how we operate. Um, we like to create reports that are uh, colorful and shine, you know, so that you'll look good when you share them with your community. So we will work hard to do that for you as well. So let's talk about our approach. And I said, this is one of the more interesting RFPs that we've seen. And uh, I'll explain that as we go through. But um, first of all, let me just kind of summarize what we see as your objectives. The first is to really identify the best practices of your competitive set. Um, with a special focus on those that have, that, that have developed a effective year-round tourism uh, promotion and economy. Um, we also want to recommend benchmarks from which Warren County could measure its performance against competitive destinations. So kind of what we're shooting for here in the following approach, and there are three things we're recommending that you do. The first is to look at geolocation data and geolocation data from your destination and all the competitive destinations that you wanna look at. Then look at um, uh, key hotel metrics from SDR. And again, at all at yourself and the competitive set. And then do a simple analysis of secondary data. And I'll tell you what that is in a minute. So um, the geolocation data basically is the, the idea is to analyze what we're gonna call marketable visitors to Warren County. We're gonna study various visitor populations in your county and the competitive set. And it'll allow us to look at when people are coming, you know, how long they're staying, 
what their residence is, where they come from, where, what other places they go uh, when they're on their trip. Uh, changes in behavior by season, orange mar origin market, and the specific attractions that they visit. So what we'll do is we'll take basically a map of your county and also for all of your competitors as well and go in and look at where people went while they were in market um, through uh, the use of what we call passively collected mobile data from, devi from mobile devices. And basically this will be, uh, you know, the data that people are <laughs> passively reporting when they're there and have their uh, mobile phones activated. Um, and the, the particular vendor that we want to use, that we've been using for a number of clients, is called Near. And we found that, that their data is very robust and uh, very effective in doing this. So we'll analyze relative tracking of devices entering and leaving the destination and the sub-destinations within it and looking at how long people stay in each and appending to that data a variety of demographic and other type information. I'll do the same thing for the destinations that you have here, the ones that you've identified as your competitive set. Uh, so we'll basically go out and buy that data from near for the last year and create this uh, story for you from it. Um, we we understand that you guys already have mobile geolocation data. We can use that by the near data from others as well. We may want to buy the uh, near data from Warren County as well if we need to. Um, and then we'll distill the past months down to uh, create a set of trusted visitor records. And this data is very interesting. It's, it's very noisy and there's a lot of stuff in it. And we've developed a way to kind of rigorously clean it and get rid of trips that are short, meaning maybe somebody just drove through, you know, we want, might not consider that a marketable visitor as I used earlier. Uh, commuters, you're gonna have people that live nearby that come in regularly for work or to come in and see a friend or something like that, not people that are necessarily a marketable visitor. And also inactive visitors we could get rid of if we choose to, people that don't do anything while they're there. Maybe they come park for a few days and then are gone, but they don't uh, explore the destination at all. And we'll work with you to, to uh, develop a definition of visitors that you're comfortable with. One of the options we presented in our proposal is doing the uh, geolocation data in an online dashboard for you. And this is something I'd highly recommend you do because it creates a great deal of power in terms of your own ability to look at the data in any way you want. And basically, we'll set up a report and you can have all the filters you want, whatever you want to look at. Maybe you decide you want to look at travelers that came in October from the north you know, northeastern U.S. Uh, include people uh, from other places. You could go in and just set the filters to do that, and then the report would self-populate. So, uh, this is something we've done for a number of destinations, and it's always a very popular and uh, useful tool. So, the second step is looking at STR multi-segment reports for the past 12 months of your competitive set again. Those that are available. Uh, if they're not available from STR, we'll do what, what work we can to understand the, uh, um, the occupancy and the, the rates and all during that place during the year by uh, doing our own research. But hopefully they'll all be available through SDR. Uh, we'll look at room nights booked, occupancy rates, you know, average daily rates, room revenue, and all those uh, typical you know, data points that the DMO world looks at when they're evaluating how their, uh, how, their, how their destination is performing. So then finally will be secondary data. You know, what this means basically is anything that we don't do ourselves. So we'll go out and we'll scour the earth basically for any, any information we can find about your competitive set. And this, this includes you know, looking online, doing phone calls, whatever it might take to identify things like visitor spending visitor volume, you know, what kind of marketing and advertising your competitors are doing, what their budgets are, and basically any data that would be helpful in understanding how the markets are changing right now. Uh, another thing we can do with our geolocation data is actually create for you estimates of visitor volume coming to your destination um, during, the, during the year, not using the data directly 
because it's not obviously going to capture all visitors, but we have an algorithm developed that we've used to develop those estimates. So we could do that for all your competitors as well. So you can see how many visitors actually are estimated to come to each of the destinations at different times of the year. So our deliverables will be straightforward. We'll create a final report of findings for you, which will include the geolocation data, the hotel you know, data, and whatever we learned from our analysis of secondary data. And uh, again, if you want a dashboard, we're happy to build that out for you as well. Um, one thing I'd like to leave you with is an understanding, and I hinted at this earlier, that we are flexible, uh, scalable, and custom. So uh, what we presented you is our idea and our what we think the best way to move forward would be for you. But if you need changes, we're, we're very happy to make them. Uh, on any level of the proposal. And uh, that goes as we move forward too. Uh, we can always, you know, shift as we go. So thank you guys. Um, happy to take any questions you might have. Is there anyone in the room here that has questions uh, this morning? We do have a couple of our uh, hoteliers that have joined us today, Sam Luciano from the Fort, William Henry and Tyler Herrick from the Queensbury Hotel, just weighing in on the hospitality group that we work uh, closely with. Gentlemen? If you have any questions, Sam, just speak. To, you have to get to the podium. Sam Luciano um, is the president of the Fort William Henry Hotel uh, mm -hmm. overlooking Lake George. So Sam is coming to the podium. Thank you. Hi, Sam. I just have a couple of questions. Um, yeah. Very good job on the proposal. Um, the time frame of the project, how, how long do you see this going on? Yeah, well, um, we had proposed in the, in our proposal, we, you know, put the date a little, a little bit earlier than now. But I think the whole thing would probably could be wrapped in about three months uh, from start to finish would be our plan. So the one thing that really stood out with this proposal that was really intriguing to me is uh, Uber Media, which I mm -hmm. understand is not part of Uber, the, uh, the car. Yeah, uh, no, no. Yeah. But in there, you, you cited 20 billion transactions per day come across this media that are dissected and analyzed. Yeah. It's a, it's a real number you guys can, can look at. And Yeah, it's an it's a astoundingly large data set that you get. And basically what we do is we would buy the data set for the time period, you know, each month during the past year, for example, for... Warren County, and then for each of your competitors, and then we would have to take that and use our, you know, data magic to uh, to create a story from it. Is effectively what we do. Um, I don't know if that, I hope that answers your your question, but yeah, it's an amazingly large number of records you get. So. Is that diving into the realm of artificial intelligence, and you know. Um, we waited, uh, marketers and research companies, probably yourself, waited for the census 2020, waited 10 years for that data to come out. Yeah. And lo and behold, COVID comes and none of it's relevant because everything changed in the middle of the collection of that data. And now we yeah. got to wait 10 years to see the impact of it. Yeah. One of the one of the big things with this proposal that the business community is interested in is your display R, I think you called it. And that's where this data collection, this AI is put in a dashboard and this this study is not a one and done it's an ongoing data system for the county yeah but you didn't address the cost of that what, what is the cost of this ongoing data yeah um if you want to do that we could we'll set it up so that every month for example we could just add the data in and then you you know it would just update and we do that for a number of clients uh the cost of that i think to buy the data um is around seven thousand dollars, something like that. I'm, I'm really sorry I don't have that data, that uh, cost right with me right now, but I, I can get it for you. Um, is that a one-time setup, or is that? Yeah, I mean, we we there might be a few hours for us to to put it in, but other than that, it wouldn't be that expensive at all. So seven so, for ongoing monthly cost after that to to maintain this um, dashboard. Yeah, yeah, but I'll get you that 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 data. I'm sorry, I haven't actually personally purchased that data. So I don't know. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Outstanding job with the proposal, uh, very detailed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, so Tyler Herrick from the Queensbury Hotel in downtown Glens Falls has a question as well. Hi, Tyler. Hey, thank you. Um, yeah, great proposal. Uh, and just a, one question as you know, at the end of all this and all the destinations and everything that you guys have done similar studies for, um, you know, do you have a, a graphic or any sort of reporting on, on, you know, what the ROI was and, and how those uh, destinations have now improved and, and, you know, taken the data and not just let it sit there, but actually did something with it? Yeah, you know, we could get you some case studies. A really good one might be Santa Barbara. They, uh, they were looking, they used this data and they were one of our early, um, early adventures in near or Uber media data. And they wanted to look really carefully at the types of people that came and stayed in their hotels, specifically their higher end hotels. So we, we set a data a dashboard up for them that they could go in and look at you know, in very close detail where people who were coming into Santa Barbara and staying in the upper end properties that they had uh, came from. You know, what, what are the specific, uh, you know, zip code areas that, that they want to target with their, you know, with their digital campaigns and all. I might be able to get you some uh, visuals on how that played out pretty quickly if you'd like. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there are a million ways you can take this. So it's a really fascinating new world in the, you know. For new yeah. I just think it will also help just to better understand, you know, the value uh, in, in going down this road. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Supervisor Wild, committee you. member, has a question. Yes, uh, thanks, John. And, and uh, a, gr a good proposal, definitely. Um, my question is about the dashboard. Yeah. Because we're talking about so much data, um, is are the queries static or can we build our own additional queries into this to maybe say we need to look at something in addition to what we're already used to looking at? Yeah. Just curious um, about the ability to do that. Yeah, what I think you'd find is that you'd want us, we'd probably want us to do that. You know, you, you'd say, okay, we need, a, we need to look at this differently, but uh, in the ideal, we'd work together closely building it so that we got really close to everything you're going to need. And then in the future, if you needed us to update it, we would. Um, I, I don't think it would probably be the best approach to have multiple teams working on it at once just for the um, complexity of dealing with the, you know, the infrastructure behind it. So. But yeah, there's no problem with doing that. I mean, that's just part of the, what we'd expect. Thank you. You know, so, and, and the reasons why I ask is sometimes I don't know what I'm looking for until I see it. Yeah. And I'm always yeah. one that likes to, you know, if I can, if they're not going to break it, I'm going to push some buttons. Yeah, yeah. Buttons. So that, that's where I was looking at. So I'm I, hoping I get that, that too. Yeah. Hopefully your expertise will help us understand some of this data so we can actually go beyond what maybe the initial pieces are and, and yeah. dig in deeper. But thank you very much. Sure. I, I always say, Mike, that good research just creates more questions, you know, because I'm unlike you. When you play with something like that, you're going to have a million questions. So we'll do what we can. Thank you. Yeah. Any other committee members? Nobody online? Uh, no, nobody in the room. Joanne? Uh, thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Uh, I would agree that as I was reading through your proposal, a lot of the language that you used and the metrics that you use, we are familiar with. Um, we do have uh, a dashboard for um, mobile tracking and short-term rental tracking. We have so much information that is all siloed. And I think what we're looking for is bringing uh, all of that data to a conclusion, in addition to including many other destinations as part of the comparison. So I can relate to everything that you're talking about um, and look forward to, um, you know, the final research project that would bring it all together uh, to us as some actionable items. Uh, any other questions? Uh, is Don on, Don Lehman? Did anybody from the public weigh in on any of this? Hi, Chairman Gary. Yes, actually, we have some comments from Gina Mincer from the Lake George Chamber. Sure. One of which is destination analyst proposal, very good information slash intel opportunity for our community and future strategy. And mind you, this is on YouTube where there's limited characters. 
Uh, per Tyler's question, it would be helpful, helpful for that dashboard to assist in diverting advertising slash marketing efforts toward effective customers. And that's all we have on YouTube. Okay. Uh, anybody else in the committee room? All right. Should we wrap this up? Yeah. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time today. And I, we will move to our second presenter. Uh, Rob, you're with us. Rob Hunden is from Hunden Strategic Partners. He's the president and CEO. And it looks like his presentation has already popped right up on the screen. Take it away, Rob. Thank you all. Really appreciate it. And uh, Dane's presentation was excellent. Uh, we haven't met, but I, I can't wait to sort of... Uh, engage with him because uh, we're passionate about the same things. And I think that, that uh, you know, you guys are asking the right questions. I, I would agree with Dave that um, this was a really interesting RFP to respond to, a little bit untraditional um, in the best way possible because it shows that you guys are truly thinking about your situation and you want to really dig in and not do, do sort of the traditional um, types of studies that a lot of uh, DMOs and, and others do in tourism, but you're really trying to figure out what's the what's the special sauce, what can we do to, to smooth out our, our seasonality and be more competitive and really dig in and see what our competitors are doing. So I've got a lot to show you in a short period of time, which is kind of um, one of the hallmarks of us is that we, we're so geeked out and passionate about um, placemaking and tourism and economic development and how that all comes together uh, that we, we tend to jam a lot into a, a small space and time. So uh, buckle up, but um, glad to be here. Very appreciate, appreciative of the opportunity to speak with you all today. So um, certainly uh, these are your, your goals and purposes, but you're really looking to research those competitive destinations, which we'd really like to, to dig in with you on that. So agenda wise, who are we? what's our process related experience. And then I'm gonna give you some examples of just some output. And there is some overlap with uh, what Dave uh, showed you, but maybe some differentiation and how, how we go about that. So I like to say that Hunden Strategic Partner stands for host, stay and play. Um, we are based in Chicago, but work worldwide, mostly North America. Um, and we are, uh, you know, we work quite a bit in the, in the Northeast, which I'll uh, show you some examples of that as well. But market intelligence and strategy for tourism destinations and all these other elements that sort of make up those destinations, as well as events, not just the physical real estate, but the events as well. Um, so tourism data analytics, market and financial feasibility, economic and fiscal impact analysis. So we take those day trippers and those overnighters and we convert those into um, what does that mean for you in terms of dollars in your pocket, dollars in the economy, jobs supported, um, taxes generated for your hotel, from your hotels, restaurants, et cetera. So um, those are all the things we do to sort of turn that market analytical data into um, hard numbers uh, that you can use and you can um, uh, make decisions based off of. And so much of our work, you saw a lot in Kentucky on that map. We are the, the official and have been for the last 10 years group that assesses all uh, requests for incentives uh, through the uh, tourism cabinet. Um, uh, and so we run those projects uh, through, through our process to understand those uh, economic impacts uh, for any investments uh, that they're proposing to make in the state in the Commonwealth. That's what I look like when I wear a different suit and a tie. Um, my background is in the, is in the public sector originally um, and finance. So I went to DC after uh, school and then uh, back to the Indianapolis local public improvement bond bank and the mayor's office where our entire focus was uh, destination development. How do we make this really, you know, most people thought probably a really boring place downtown Indianapolis. How do we make that cool and compelling uh, and attractive for tourism and events and conventions and all of those things. So worked on every kind of element that we still focus on today in terms of placemaking. So then for the last 20 years, I've been in Chicago, 20 plus, and have had my firm for the last 15 years and have consulted on 800 plus projects and studies and billions in, in developed real estate and tourism uh, events. So it's, um, it's an exciting place to be. I'm really involved in many of the organizations um, that serve uh, the various niches that we that we play in. And I love to teach about what we do. And, uh, and 
you sort of become the student when you're the teacher too. So um, that's fun. I'll be at the Nashville International Economic Development Council convention this weekend talking about placemaking. So it's very exciting to do that. So you've got these key questions. Um, which seasonal competitive vacation destinations have shown the greatest strength over the last five years? What are the top 10 fastest growing summer destinations? Best practices, very critical to understand those best practices, getting those folks on the phone and really sort of asking them what was their special sauce? If they had a magic wand, what would they do? What would they do differently? Um, and, and so there's a lot you can learn from your competitors as well as, well as comparables. Um, for Warren County, who are your uh, emerging visitor populations? How do we sort of accent, accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative? So we sort of want to, and, and, and I guess that bullet is latch on to the affirmative, right? Um, and then understand who are your top five competitor destinations, what they're um, spending on marketing and advertising. How do we sort of compare and how do you rationalize some of those investments um, to make sure that um, that you're always um, you're always bulletproof in, in your um, in your approach to destination marketing. And we're very curious to sort of go through some of those destinations with you and and understand um, your perspective on those destinations and why you think they're uh, the best ones to utilize, and maybe there are some on the bubble that we want to add or subtract. So we'd like to talk to you about that. We have a very strong approach to our methodology and scope with lots of check-ins throughout the process, which I'll talk about in a bit. But we've broken down our, our work into uh, these tasks, which is a robust kickoff process by phone and then in person, of course, on the on-the-ground due diligence to truly understand who you are. And to the extent that we can go and visit um, many of your competitors during that process, of course, perfect time of the year to do that. If we can get going soon uh, with the leaf changing season, it's just great. We're kicking off a study in Portland, Maine in a couple of weeks. So it's, uh, it's good timing for them too. Uh, of course, we'll assess the mo your local economic and demographic situ situation as well as the entire uh, destination profile from uh, attractions and events to everything in between. Um, as I mentioned, we want to work with you on sort of discussing through the comparable and competitive destinations uh, to, and I think the comparables will sort of flesh out during the process. The competitors will talk about from day one and figure out, like I said, if some are on the bubble, in or out, what do we want to do? Uh, because that's a lot to keep up with. Once we sort of set that and you want to do your dashboard, um, we want to have a good baseline to look at. Uh, of course, collecting that data we'll talk about and then everything that we will have learned from all of that analysis, which is much more detailed than our scope of work, um, we get really granular and we, you know, I always say one good conversation is worth a day and a half of uh, Google searches, which I think, you know, a lot of the younger generation don't quite understand, but there's a ton that we learn by talking to professionals in the industries and your competitors. We're frenemies, right? In destination development, we're, we're all trying to do the same thing. So the people that you're competing with are also your colleagues and your friends, and they love to share what they've done well, but they'll also usually admit what they messed up and what they have changed to do it better. So we, we're gonna learn a lot about that. So we're gonna take all that data, and some of that I'm gonna show you here in a little bit, and then turn that into best practices, trends, and recommendations for you, uh, and then come up with that dashboard. So um, you know about yourself, but we're about to deep dive in and really start to understand it. So we have, you've got a lot to offer already. So it's a great question of like, it's great to start with sort of your baseline and understand that. How do we convert that into a more, more full-fledged year-round um, set of events and attractions um, and, and uh, things that are, people are attracted to so that you're busy throughout the year. Um, for your competitive vacation destinations, um, they're mostly in the Northeast, although you've got the outlier there in Daytona Beach, Florida. Again, a little bit Atlantic City too. We were just on the phone with them because uh, we're working in the Meadowlands right now. So we're talking about um, how Atlantic City um, competes and their challenge with airlift. Um, but we're looking very much forward to uh, diving into all of these uh, destinations with you. And so you've got your year-round destinations that you mentioned. So we've got those sort of profiled here a little bit. Spring, summer, and fall destinations. All these are so great and so much to learn from each one. But they all, you know, they all have their challenges. We've worked in Ithaca and, and understand some of the challenges there in the Finger Lakes. Um, 
course, then it changes when you've got your winter destination. So uh, we're going to dive in. And I think, you know, making sure we are on the same page with that dashboard, you guys had some great ideas relative to what types of data you want to understand about your competitors and yourselves. We have some other ideas as well that, um, you know, I think once we get into it, we'll, we'll talk about. Uh, milestones in communication. So we're, um, we're very communicative throughout the process. We don't start, you know, at day one and finish it, you know, thir 12, 13 weeks later and just give you what we say is the one answer. We're, we're checking in throughout, including a big check-in sort of in the middle, uh, late middle, say like week seven or eight maybe, uh, with our uh, preliminary market findings. And that's a big presentation we'll give to you to really make sure we're all on the same page, but also we have time to make uh, course corrections and, uh, and then start going into sort of the development of all the, the final findings and the, and the outputs, which is exciting. Our research tools are uh, uh, similar and uh, I think um, maybe more even robust than and some of the ones you've already heard about today. So Smith Travel Research, of course, anybody in the tourism and hotel industry, we all use that. Uh, we have co we have access to CoStar, which we uh, subscribe to, Esri, of course. Um, there's lots of data there, but really Placer.ai, which is the geolocation um, assessments, instead of having to purchase individual reports from them with a static criteria, um, we actually invested in a different way in that company so that we have 24 seven access to everything that they have so that we can continue to change it up as needed by our clients to uh, tweak data and look at data in different ways. And that's allowed us to actually help them develop their tool better because they weren't really in the tourism space before. All this geolocating stuff started with retailers and tracking you know, foot traffic to malls. Um, they weren't really in that placemaking part so uh, we now, and here's some of the outputs, so we can turn um, this geolocation stuff into a lot more useful data and we get in there and tweak it and we show, you know, the local visitation over here versus the uh, visitation from say over hundred miles away. We can change that up however we want. We know the average visits per customer, um, lots of other breakdowns, uh, the trends throughout the year. Uh, I think we have some more here. Um, yeah, here's some more uh, seasonality here for a specific project and then the, the distance. But we also know the demographics, and I'll show you some of that soon, too. I'll give you an example of that. Um, then we also have our in-house mapping. So my brother actually works with me, and he has forever since we started. Um, and he is a cartographer and a data geek and a placemaking uh, nerd just like the rest of us. And so... Um, he comes up with, and, and in fact, has done professional mapping for destinations for the past 20 plus years, uh, but now he's primarily in-house for us. I mean, he, we work him like a dog, so um, he doesn't have a lot of time for DMOs anymore, but DMOs get the benefit of the work that he produces for our reports, and so we can do all kinds of stuff, and, and we think that those visuals really help people understand the situation. Just to show you that, you know, you saw the map of where we work. Um, it's all over the place, and our experience in the Northeast is, uh, you know, very robust as well. Um, the conference center in Ithaca is one that we're working on. We're working in Long Island right now. We've worked at the casinos in Connecticut and uh, in, in Maine and New Hampshire, and so have not worked in Vermont yet. They're they're on my bucket list, but um, but we we have worked all over the place and, and continue to enjoy um, sort of our niche in places all over the United States and Canada. Uh, a tourism destination market analysis similar to yours for Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, although theirs was not in, as in-depth as yours is in looking at their competitors. So, um, you know, we work in small cities, small rural areas. I live in a similar kind of small rural area to, uh, in terms of uh, population uh, to where you are. Uh, relative to like a big city like Dallas or Chicago, where we also do these huge master plans and um, convention expansion uh, plans and destination placemaking, all of that. This is a three county region in the, uh, the thumb area, sort of like here, uh, Saginaw area of Michigan, uh, that we did a whole destination uh, development plan for them. Uh, King Ranch, if you've heard of the King Ranch board uh, truck, we're working for the King Ranch down in Kingsville, Texas. 
which is one of the oldest continuously owned uh, and largest uh, ranches. It's bigger than the state of Rhode Island um, in the in the country. Uh, Wild Horse Pass in Arizona is a, a long term client of ours where we've done a lot of placemaking for them in terms of racetracks and casinos and mixed use villages and all kinds of things like that. Long Island, another big mixed use project there. So a lot of real estate, but also destination placemaking like in Chester, PA, which is a pretty forlorn area today that we're working on a long-term plan for them to Im improve. Pawtucket, Rhode Island, same thing, sort of a, a tough area on the, uh, the, the river there that now is going to be redeveloped. And we've just been part of the big redevelopment of the Fort Worth uh, stockyards in Texas, really re-enlivening that, uh, which has already got millions of visitors per year, uh, really assessed what they were missing. They were sort of a check the box, one off, you know, you can go for two hours, see what you need, watch this, this long horn steers go down the street and you're done. Now it's a long day overnight experience, hotels, restaurants, all compelling stuff, chef driven, um, the, the whole thing has changed, which is great. So anyway, lots of other examples here uh, all over the country. Um, so from every, every kind you can imagine. So today we literally just delivered this to our client in Rockford, Illinois. So this is an example of some of the output um, that we can use or the ways that we can use our placer, which is what we call our geolocation data um, for our clients. They're, they're trying to get a, a state grant to um, support this stroll on state. Um, and so uh, we literally just cranked this out overnight um, in the last, uh, you know, in the last uh, week or so, uh, but delivered it today. And I just thought this would be helpful for you to see that we can isolate down you know, the attendees, the percent within certain miles, um, what the weather was like that day that might have uh, changed uh, how things performed, um, and a comparison over time. So we have these comparisons and this data, um, sort of a, we can geofence uh, with a polygon to show very specific uh, areas uh, with, you know, so it's, it's not just pre-done, pre-cooked, we can be very prescriptive with it. Um, here we have uh, the 2017 visitation maps and where people came from for this, then 2018, and then 2019. So you can see maybe some changes that occurred over time. We know where people went before and after uh, they went to maybe a specific event like Stroll on State or maybe a specific attraction, you know, like a, a, a certain a part of your county, for example. Um, so that really helps understand the connectivity of certain of your attractions to other attractions or events to attractions. And that one plus one equals three synergy of creating itineraries for your visitors, um, which is a big thing that people really tried to do, especially during COVID. Um, so we have uh, all these lists of where people were before and after. So that's really helpful and uh, other places that they like to go to. So that's kind of helpful depending on the situation. Distance traveled, you've seen this, this is a big deal. We wanna understand where our impact, you know, how much impact are we generating and from how far away. Um, hours of the day, um, so different uh, years here shown. So we can see a little bit of difference in, in the hours of the day. Length of stay, how long did people stay? Was it like the, the stockyards where it was one and done in an hour and a half? Or are they now staying for more than two and a half hours? So here we're looking at 150 minutes plus, which is very exciting for the situation. So they're getting people for a long period of time. We have these demographic breakdowns by household income. So that's really helpful. And then we get into ethnicity. I don't really love to focus on ethnicity, but what I do like to focus on are sort of the age brackets as well as the, um, as well as, um, you know, Esri has sort of the tapestries. They've got 67 tapestries and then Mosaic has their uh, similar idea where they break down different uh, people types based on how they spend their time and money. And so what we have here are experienced mosaic USA lifestyle groups and types. And so here in Rockford, we see that we have aspirational fusion and autumn years and families in motion and singles and starters as their top demographics, sort of how they over penetrated versus the population uh, for that. 
and we have descriptions of what, what each of those things, you know, who those people are generally, age, income, that kind of thing, how they spend their time and money. Um, so that's really fun and helpful. It's been really great for us to use this for King Ranch for their existing tourism. Um, and this sort of breaks it down a little bit more in terms of, uh, we all love colorful things, right? So this is uh, more geeking out detail. Um, and then of course, STR analytics, um, you know, we've been doing hotel studies on part of the International Society of Hospitality Consultants. So we are sort of doing hotel studies, you know, 25 plus times a year and uh, really like to put the output uh, into as much graphical form as possible to understand seasonality, day of week, time of year, um, ADR, I can see of course, RevPAR um, and the breakdowns of, you know, is it leisure group, corporate, that sort of thing. So heat charts and unaccommodated demand. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to learn a lot throughout this process and I can't wait to dig in just a real quick way to finish why us, uh, we're passionate about what we do. We, we're going to be reaching out to your competitors and your comparables out there to learn about them. We're creative and we just um, sort of grind internally and really brainstorm about a lot of things. Data-driven will tell you the truth and transparent about what we learn so that you can use that as a tool for moving forward. Um, and we think we're pretty creative and we do all this in-house, uh, of course, then with our partners that we've invested in in terms of the, the data that we purchase. Um, and we'll be benchmarking for future success so that you can continue to um, mark, your, uh, mark your successes and your, and your path along the way. Um, and I would say we are recommended and rehired for a reason uh, because I think people get the, you know, how committed we are to the relationship and all the things that we bring to the table um, that may not be on the written document of our contract. But if we figure out something that really needs to happen for you, we're going to make it happen. So with that, I will stop and open it up for questions and really appreciate uh, everybody taking the time to listen. It was probably a lot to take in. Okay, thank you, Rob. Anybody uh, in the committee room has a question? Sam, uh, Tyler, questions, please. First will be Sam Luciano from Fort William Henry in Lake George. Thank you, Rob. Another great proposal. I think they're both very good. I'll start with, you had the luxury of seeing the first gentleman's proposal. Um, <laughs> so can you talk about the ESRI and the GRT and how that compares to Uber Media, are they are they very similar? Because the one thing that seems to be in both proposals that we don't we don't have the capability of it in the business sector is that cell phone data, that twenty billion pieces of information. Yep. yep. Yeah. So um, yeah, we we have just started. Some of our clients use Uber Media, um, but ultimately, you know, there are a number of companies that that access the cell phone tracking data, right? And so we all use different ones. Um, and it's sort of uh, what we tested out several groups uh, before we decided to invest in placer.ai because uh, we did not wanna be stuck in a box where we had to say like, okay guys, um, we have a client that needs something really quick and they need it cheap, um, and, but we need to sort of play with this to figure it out. And, and they wouldn't allow you to do that too easily. And it was sort of like, predetermined POIs, places of interest, right? Um, and the output was always fairly static. You know, it was consistent, petly packaged data. And so what I love about what we're able to do versus other platforms that I've seen is that we literally have their entire dashboard um, available to us and all the data back to 2017 and it updates, um, you know, as recently as a week ago and that continues on. Now that's true for all, anybody that has this data, but the difference is, is that we actually just get to go into their, you know, uh, portal essentially and create our own outputs. Um, so we can, you know, you, we spend hours and hours and hours um, playing around with it to figure out what makes the most sense um, and, it, we just have total creative control over what we're going to assess and how we're going to assess it. And there's a lot more that you can do with it than people realize. And so that's why we, uh, you know, sorted through a bunch and picked the one that we did and made a huge investment in them as our company, as a financial uh, investment for us. And it's really paid off. Our, our clients absolutely love it. So when you, when you talk about a granular deep dive into the data, 
I assume that might be part of it. Will you get into segment breakdowns such as in the lodging industry, the limited service versus full service versus uh, Airbnb and VBRO? Yep, yep, absolutely. So SDR is great for hotels and it's not so great for uh, non-hotel lodging, uh, but there are other, uh, there are several other uh, data sources for the non-hotel lodging, which of course is becoming more and more prevalent. So uh, we utilize those uh, when it's a situation like yours where um, hotels often, and, and actually in a lot of places we work, hotels aren't the primary place that people stay anymore. Um, so we have access to that data through a couple of different different uh, sources, um, some we like better than others. But yeah, we, we absolutely will be able to show you what you have and how it's performing and, and with a breakdown, you know, of age, um, you know, chain scale, brands, you know, all that kind of stuff. Will you also get into the generational and cultural breakdowns as well with the customers? Yeah, so that's where the Mosaic and the Esri come in. So Esri and Mosaic are essentially trying to do the same things, right? They're they're um, two different versions of uh, sort of s sorting uh, the American consumer, right? Um, and so we use both, and um, and and we I think there's there's benefit to using both. The Mosaic data is really new uh, that we're digging into just this year, and Esri is something that we've all used for a long, long time. Um, so we're, we're, we are now comparing and contrasting how those two are coming up, but, but yeah, absolutely. We'll be able to show you, I think what's great about the geolocation data being connected to the mosaic is that we actually know, um, more about your visitors because of how they connect those dots, literally those dots, right. Um, versus like, Esri is more like, okay, this is who lives in this zip code, right? Um, and so I think that the linkage of Placer with Mosaic to me was a game changer this year. So things are changing, innovating, and we love that. Just one last question, and th this is maybe outside the scope of this study, but in best practices of other destinations, one thing that we're all facing these days is a labor shortage. Will you dip into any of that in the best practice part of your uh, study? Yeah, we certainly can. I mean, it's something that uh, we query our, our uh, friends and colleagues in the space all the time. I was just at the dinner last night at the safe house and, and you know, talking to the manager and, and the staff about how they're dealing with it. I mean, we it's literally a daily conversation that we have with everybody we're talking to. How are they mitigating that? Um, so yes, we are happy to uh, include uh, that uh, line of questioning as part of our research and can add those results uh, to, the, our, to our updates. Rob, thank you. Very well done. Thank you. Anybody in the committee room have a question? Supervisor Wild. Mr. Chairman, I do. And thank you um, so much. And I, and I want to thank our staff um, because these are two excellent presentations. But as, as we went through the discussions today, um, I was really caught off guard by the emerging piece of this. Um, and it's emerging visitors, uh, but it also may be emerging competitive destinations. So that's, you know, we kind of put together our thought about who we compete against, but there may very well be other areas that we're not even aware of that might give us opportunities to go and market or learn from and the like. So I'm curious as, as you are, your thoughts about building the solution for us, whether some of this data that we're talking about that's tracking people and the mosaic piece, can we Id identify people that may have come here, stayed here, but have also gone to other places that we're not quite aware of yet? Yeah, well, certainly I think it's a great question and something we'd love to dig in with you. Um, how we are able to track you know, that same person, you know, did they come to multiple of your competitors over time? You know, the cell phone data, of course, we're not tracking like your specific cell phone. So we can't really do that per se, but we, I think we can certainly going back to the emerging part, uh, we can start to look at trends. Since we have the data back to 2017, we can start to see what demographics are shifting in terms of who came when to see what is emerging, right? Um, and certainly during the pandemic, a lot of things started to change. Um, and now there's been sort of like a quasi-permanent change 
I guess. Um, we don't know yet, but there's a lot of um, new trends occurring in the travel and leisure space uh, because people can work from anywhere so that during the week, people are acting like visitors more than just on the weekends because a lot of people can now work from anywhere. So how do you capture those folks? We're actually investing in a hotel out in um, Garden of the Gods, Colorado, where that's part of our development. Uh, concept is that we want this to be a place where people can literally work from home, but they're working from a destination. So um, those are emerging and we can't wait to dive into that and, and help answer those questions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Turner. Any other uh, questions from anybody online? Uh, Don, any questions from the public? Yes, uh, Supervisor Strau, you're muted. There you are. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I, I thought that was a, 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 a very good presentation, Rob. Thank you. But Thank I you. did have, you know, and there's lots of interesting things, but I'm going to just focus on one question here is in your key questions towards the beginning of the presentation, you mentioned that one of the questions should be what seasonal competition, competitive vacation uh, destination have shown the greatest growth over the last five years. Can, can you give me an example of what might be something that fits in that category? Uh, well, we haven't done your study yet. So uh, as it relates to, to you specifically, uh, we don't know those answers yet, but we certainly have, yeah, great ways of measuring that. But you're asking like, are there destinations we're aware of that have really grown a lot in the last five years? Yeah. 100%. So what we're really seeing are destinations like, and this was predating COVID, but it really was uh, exaggerated or exacerbated or lit on fire, or whatever, um, rocket to the moon kind of thing by, by COVID as well. The Intermountain West, uh, a lot of destinations out there, Bozeman, Montana, Missoula, Montana, Boise, um, uh, all over Utah and Nevada. Um, uh, parts of Washington state. There are a lot of places uh, that were growing both economically as well as tourism wise because people were already um, priced out of big cities and you might uh, benefit from that too. It's not just happening out west, it's happening in, in the east coast as well where people were starting to be priced out of these big cities like Boston and New York and they could take the time to work remotely and so we were seeing this nice um, um, a positive cycle of people being able to work remotely and also sort of um, then the tourism in those same places was exploding. And so we've seen places like Bend, Oregon um, and many others uh, really explode in the last five years. And, um, you know, so they're big and small. I mean, Austin and Nashville are great examples of big cities that have exploded in the last five years. But there are many, many, many small places and there are sort of ways to do it, but it is very uh, much linked uh, between economic development and tourism development. And it's tough to do one without the other for a long-term sustainable situation. Where I live is not doing that very well. They're great in the summer and the fall, but their economic development's not that great otherwise. And so it's not, it's tough for them to keep um, to, you know, other than the tourism. So I think what you're probably trying to do is have both occur, have both economic and population development go as well as tourism development because where people, people go where people like to visit and visitors like to go where people like to live. So those are the things that, um, you know, I think we would focus on uh, but we have a bunch of examples of places that are really exploding over the last five years for sure. Well, one of the reasons why I ask is that sometimes you have situations where you have an asset, uh, but it's been kind of sleepy in terms of getting it out there uh, as to you have this asset. For example, in our area, uh, we have a tremendous asset, and that being bicycling both family bicycling, mountain biking, bicycling. We have all styles and all ranges of abilities. And, um, you know, so, so you're starting to see a change too in why people go from one destination to another. 
you're starting to see, I think, more active family activities, uh, whether it be kayaking or biking. And um, uh, so that's why I asked the question. I'm just wondering if it's playing up the assets of a particular area that can contribute to the success of it becoming a tourist destination. Well, absolutely. And one of the things that we did in uh, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, is they wanted us to look at their how they're sort of marketing themselves and, and are they are they doing themselves a favor or are they maybe not um, exemplify or putting a spotlight where it needs to be on a lot of things. We've worked, uh, you know, a great example of what you're talking about is Northwest Arkansas. Um, you know, one of the Walton kids who's you know, an adult older than us, um, is hugely into biking and it's a great biking area. They have made that a mainstay for them. And it is now a huge uh, sort of a, a way they sell people. Like if you have to work for Walmart and move to Northwest Arkansas, which is again, booming, a five-year example you mentioned, but it's like, how do you convince them it's a great place to live and visit? Well, they've got all this biking culture now because they've really invested in that, but they've also promoted the crap out of it. Um, and they've got like uh, GoPro video, YouTube videos, uh, you know, out there. And so, you know, there are a lot of examples of places that um, don't maybe do as good a job showing off who they are and what they are um, and others that do. So we can we can look at that for you. We, you know, for Sun Prairie, they did a terrible job of marketing and branding themselves. And so one of the recommendations we said is you need a total redo on your marketing and branding. And so actually they've got an RFP out for someone to do that right now. So, and that's not what we do. We know people who, who do like redo your marketing and branding, but we can certainly assess it um, with our folks. So that's something we'll be taking a look at. Oh, thank you. Is any other questions from the committee room here? Any other questions? Supervisor Wild, one more. Mr. Chairman, I, and I'm sorry, uh, timing for a decision to be made. Do we have a uh, sense on the timing and what the next steps are? Yes, um, I think we're going to talk about it today. <clears throat> after Shortly after this meeting, we'll go into executive session and just briefly discuss it. If we need more time, then we'll reschedule another meeting. Thank you. Uh, anybody, anybody else? Well, Rob, I'd like to thank you for your presentation. I think... Uh, we, uh, we really appreciate both of them. You did a great job and uh, we'll be having a discussion. Hopefully we'll know within a week or two weeks time. Thank you both for uh, coming today. Fantastic. Nice to see you all. Nice to meet you, Dave. And uh, yeah, we can't right. wait. And good, Take Robin. Care. Thank you all yep. for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Are we all set? Okay, I guess, uh, you know, we could go into uh, executive session to discuss these if you want to, because we're going to choose a uh, corporation to go to work for us. I think that's allowable. According to yes. a discussion leading to the appointment of a corporation. Yes, so if somebody would like to do that now, we could certainly do that. Mm -hmm. Supervisor Beatty? I'll make that motion. Do we have a second by Supervisor Wild? I'll second that on condition that these two gentlemen might be able to stay in the room to help us make a good decision. Is that all right? Which two gentlemen? The, the, the Tyler and, and oh, they were in a. It's, 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 it's up to the chair of the committee. The paperwork, the smart guys in the room. Yes, I, I, I will allow that. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And you're good. It's a cut. You're all set. Okay, uh, we're out of executive session. We had two very good proposals. Um, I'll entertain a motion to uh, accept one or the other. I have a motion by Supervisor Wild to approve the contract with. At the second presentation, that was. Hudnan Strategic Hudden, Partners. Hudden Strategic Partners. Okay, we have a second by Supervisor Beatty. Mm -hmm. Committee discussion. All I can say is, Mr. Chairman, it was really close to the decision between the okay. two. They're both excellent. Okay, and the amount bid is seventy-two thousand. Let's vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. I don't believe there's any. Uh, is there any other public comment, Don? Hmm? We'll, we'll do that in finance. There was a comment from Gina Mincer earlier on, although I think we've lost that link now, and I don't have that anymore. It'll come back when that video is archived, but 
and I can email it to you. It was a question for the company that you ultimately chose. So, okay, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, that's one of my comments is just they, they were very both good presentations. And if the public or our hospitality group has questions they want us to try to ask, like, let us know and we'll work on that before yeah, the just, board meeting coming up. Just work through Joanne. Yeah, through Joanne. Yep. Okay, motion to adjourn. Motion by uh, Doug, second by Supervisor Well. Thank you both for coming in. Okay, we are adjourned.